Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a complex trigonometric equation with Euler's number. So a lot of good things together. We have sine x minus i times cosine x equals e, and we're going to be solving for x. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So to be able to solve this problem, for my first method and for the second method too, I'm going to be using Euler's formula. It's a, an amazing formula, just mind-blowing. e to the power i theta can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta. Amazing, right? A relationship that puts together amazing functions. So now, how do we use this information? We do need sine x and cosine x, so let's go ahead and solve for each one. To keep a long story short, I'm going to tell you what they are. But if you wanted to know where these come from, you can go ahead and check out my lecture videos on my other channel, A plus BI, where I talk about complex numbers in detail. Anyway, so from here, cosine theta can be written as e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta, because when you replace theta with negative theta, sine is an odd function, that's what you get, divide by 2, and sine theta becomes the difference and you divide by 2i instead of 2. Okay, so something easy to remember if you memorize these. Now let's go ahead and replace theta with x because that's what we have as our angle or the argument. So sine x is going to be e to the ix minus e to the negative ix divided by 2i. That's my sine x minus, minus i times cosine x. And cosine is e to the ix plus e to the negative ix divided by 2. Awesome. So to make a common denominator, we can go ahead and multiply by i here and cancel out the i's, but that's not what we want. Let's go ahead and multiply by negative i because that's going to make a positive denominator. So I'm going to multiply by negative i here and by negative i here. So in the numerator, I'm going to be getting negative i e to the ix plus i e to the negative ix. And of course, that's going to be divided by 2 because i times negative i is negative i squared. And since i squared is negative 1, negative i squared is going to be positive 1. Something you should always remember. And that's divided by 2. Since we have a common denominator now, let's go ahead and just subtract the second numerator. Minus e i e to the i x minus i e to the negative i x. And all of that is divided by 2, and we set that equal to 1. By the way, this is a mistake. It's supposed to be 1. I just accidentally wrote e. So we're going to be solving that for 1. Okay? Now, this is equal to 1. And then let's go ahead and simplify this. Some terms will cancel out. For example, we can go ahead and these two can be canceled out. We're going to have negative 2i e to the i x divided by 2 equals 1. We can go ahead and cross out the 2s. And now we have a negative sign. We can put that on the right-hand side, but let's not do it because next I'm going to multiply both sides by i. And negative i squared is going to disappear one more time. So that's what's cool about it. Multiply by i, multiply by i. And then we're going to get a negative i squared here. By the way, this is supposed to be 1 times i, not i times i. And this is going to be 1, and I'm going to get e to the i x equals i. Awesome. I know some, some people tend to just ln both sides here, and they just write, you know, i x equals ln i, and that x equals ln i over i. But what is ln i over i? We kind of need to simplify that, okay? Because you kind of natural logging a complex number. So that's a complex logarithm. Anyways, so I want to write i in polar form. And remember, i can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2, which is the principal value for the argument, plus 2 pi n, which are multiples of 2 pi. Obviously, you're going to have infinitely many values. This is a multi-valued function. Okay? And from here, i cancels out, and we can basically set the exponents equal to each other, and that's going to give us the value of x right away. x equals pi over 2 
plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. Make sense? I hope it does. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, and hopefully you're going to be able to compare them and let me know which one do you like better. Okay? Obviously, the first method seems a little longer than the second one, but you'll get to decide which one is better. So, again, we're going to go back to the basics and cosine theta plus i sine theta is equal to e to the i theta for any angle theta. And even theta can even be complex. Can you imagine? That's just crazy. Replace theta with i, you're going to get something interesting. Anyways, that's a different story. So now, and here's what I'd like to get at. I do need sine x minus i cosine x. And this is equal to 1. Now notice that sine and cosine are switched around, but not only that, the sine becomes negative cosine. So what kind of transformation or movement or whatever you want to call it can achieve this, right? So this is where the special angles come in. And these are my special angles, let me tell you. If you're studying trigonometry, you should definitely know these tricks because these are good shortcuts. Pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Those are my special angles. As you know, those are the corners, right, on my unit circle. Here's what you need to know about these angles. If you ever use pi and 2 pi and touch any of these functions with these two things, I'll show you what I mean by touch, then the function is going to stay the same. But if you touch with these ones, these are bad ones, and the blue ones are the good ones, okay? The pink ones are bad ones. These will switch the function. Switch meaning sine to cosine, cosine to sine. And of course, tangent to cotangent and cotangent to tangent. Make sense? That's what we need. We need to change the cosine to sine, but sine to negative cosine. So how is that possible? So here's what we need to do. We have to move the sine to a quadrant from the first quadrant to a quadrant where sine is negative, but cosine needs to move to that quadrant and it needs to be positive. Which quadrant am I talking about? The fourth one. Yes, because in the fourth quadrant, cosine is positive, but sine is negative. Therefore, that's going to give us what we want. Make sense? But how do you put an angle, and just like any angle x, let's say, let's say this is x, and x uh, doesn't have to be acute, but let's just take an acute angle because that's easier to understand. And I want to move it, but I also want to change the name. So I have to use this one or that one. But in this case, I'm going to use 3 pi over 2. In other words, if you go ahead and add 3 pi over 2 to x, make sense? Then you're going to be in the fourth quadrant. And obviously, the, uh, my triangle is going to be switched around. So sine and cosine are going to switch places. Make sense? I hope it does. In other words, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm going to replace theta with 3 pi over 2 plus x. And then from here, cosine 3 pi over 2 plus x plus i sine 3 pi over 2 plus x is going to be e to the i theta because notice that this is my new theta in terms of x. And, of course, the 3 pi over 2 is going to touch x, change the name this one to sine x, and this one is going to be changed to negative sine x, negative cosine x, I'm sorry, because why did it become a negative while changing the name? Because sine is negative in the fourth quadrant, and this puts an acute angle in the fourth quadrant. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now this is equal to e to the i theta, right? But it's also equal to 1. So what does that mean? It means that e to the i theta is equal to 1. But what is e to the i theta? It's e to the power i times 3 pi over 2 plus x, and that's equal to 1. So this is 0. Not necessarily. It's just one of the values. But we're going to find infinitely many values from here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write the 1 as a complex number. So in other words, we're going to complexify it and write it as e to the power i times 2 pi n which is a multiple of 2 pi. But let me use 2 pi k here. I want to use a different integer because at the end, I want to get n. Let me show you how that's done. Now again, the i will cancel out. We're going to end up with 3 pi over 2 plus x equals 2 pi k. I'm supposed to solve for x. Let's go ahead and add negative 3 pi over 2 to both sides. 
And guess what? You probably know the principal value for negative 3 pi over 2, but let me show you how the trick is done. 3 pi, negative 3 pi over 2 can actually be written as pi over 2 minus 2 pi. And then I'm going to do a little trick here, hocus pocus, abracadabra. I'm going to be getting pi over 2 plus, here's the fun part, 2k minus 2 multiplied by pi. And I'm going to replace 2k minus 2 with 2n because 2k minus 2 is an even number. k is an integer and 2n is also an even number. And this is going to give us the exact same answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.